Hey guys, Tyro up here with part two of my coverage of the 1.3.0 patch. This particular video covering Brits, the In Africa Corps, bug fixes, and my final thoughts on the patch as a whole. On to the British forces, and we're starting out with the BL 5.5. Got a command point increase now, going from two to three. BL 5.5 powers. Also now more expensive now, 320 to 400 manpower, and a health decrease as well. I think, you know, the BR 5.5 has been the most popular piece of artillery. I think partially because the Indian artillery battle group is just so strong. But also, Sappers it has, uh, you know, a four model damage cap instead of three, like the other forms of artillery. Uh, it does have a slower rate of fire than something like the Kanoni. But, yeah, you can get the extra shells. You can get a lot of shells from it. Sappers I think the ultimate orders. issue with the BR 5.5, though, is the fact that you can still build it in your base. It's, you know, this means it can't get hit by off maps and, you know, it just can't get easily countered in any real fashion. But, you know, the game's been out for a long time and you can still build it in base. So maybe they've decreased the health because they can't figure out not building it in base or I'm, I'm not sure. Or maybe they feel it's unfair. Maybe they haven't figured out a way to stop the canone from setting up in base, like when you deploy it off the half track. So they felt like it was Royal fair that you could ready. still build the BR 5.5 in base. I'm not sure. But yeah, maybe they're doing the health decrease because of that, because they, they're not going to force you building out of base. And the thing with BR 5.5, on most maps, it's so long range, you can safely build it in base, even in like 4v4s, and still hit a meaningful amount of stuff with it. So you don't really get punished. So yeah, I mean, you know, 480 health, if somebody comes for a base dive with like a medium tank, it's still four shots to kill, so you should have a good amount of time to react to it. But yeah, interesting, BR 5.5 changes. The Dingo now has shared veterancy, which I think is fair enough, but be careful using it right now because it's bugged, it can't fire on the move. CMP truck, Vet 1, improved logistic ability, now shared between the regular variant and the medical variant, I think it's fair enough. And pretty much the CMP truck never spends much time to get V1 unupgraded anyway. Most players go straight for medics or straight for the post and for anti-air. So it's all right. Commandos, grenade AOE distance improved to be the same as the rifle grenade. The paratrooper grenade, I didn't mention this in the previous video, but also got the same treatment. I think it's sensible overall, but you know maybe there's still some scope to improve the uh, damage on these grenades. But it's a good starting point at least. The Crusader anti-air. It's getting nerfed here, which is maybe a little bit surprising to me. It's area of effect radius reduced from 2.5 to 2, and the area of effect distance is also reduced right across the range. It, you know, after the Crusader got its uh, rate of fire patched, so it wasn't shooting like twice as fast as it was supposed to, it didn't really feel that oppressive to me in the last patch. What did feel very strong last patch was Stuart spam into Crusader spam, into Churchill's and never having to tech at all. That felt very good. But the Crusader as an isolated unit with its performance didn't really feel uh, too good to me. So I'm surprised by that nerf. We're going to have a TTK race here. The newly buffed Webwind against the freshly nerfed Have Crusader against a squad of Grenadiers clumped up on the wrong side of cover. Commandant, the men are See ready. who gets through them fastest. Hmm. And uh, this costs vehicle crews can communicate via radio 20 fuel and 60 manpower more. And it took like twice as long to kill the squad. <laughs> uh, okay, they have nerfed the passive sight range bonus on the Ricky package upgrade. Used to see midway between these two lines, now it only sees to here. So a five range sight bonus over a regular section. The light vehicle withdraw and refit ability in the British Armoured Battle Group no longer cost munitions anymore. Did feel a little bit unusual that you had to pay munis for this given that, you know, from the company command post, not that much later on you could just do this anyway. But personally I think this ability should probably just be changed out for something completely different. Because yeah, as I said, you can get it from your company command not too much later on. Basically never see anybody going down this side of the tree because you know you typically come down here 
and you want to get to this stuff first, this stuff later on. So extremely niche, already covered later on from your stock units. I think it would be better just to give this to like a different faction and a different battle group altogether. On top of that, this Ford Repair Assembly, to the best of my knowledge, has an atrociously bad repair rate. So maybe that could be looked at at the same time. This tool got quite a lot of nerfs, and we're going to start out with the Mark Vehicle Ability. This is what you get from the Tank Commander. So 25% uh, additional damage, 50% easier to hit, and 25% incoming weapon penetration decreased from 50% weapon penetration. So it's one of the nerfs, and I'm from 25 to 45 munitions, another nerf. You know, it was all revealed while active. I mean, that is a lot of stuff to get for 25 munis. So I can definitely see a cost increase and a pin nerf. 45, is it too high? I don't know, maybe, but justified overall, I think. Because, you know, now we can see exactly what it does with the numerical descriptions. That's a lot of stuff. The steward also got a bunch of changes to its AoE. The steward also got a... The Stuart also got a bunch of changes to its main gun, targeting its anti-infantry performance. So first off, its AoE, if you get a point-blank shot, it's going to be doing half the damage it was previously. Also, in terms of AoE area, the point-blank shot area is smaller, but the uh, area, apart from that, is quite a lot larger now, and at the edge of the area, you'll be doing twice as much damage as you were previously. So, yeah not going to be like one-shotting stuff as often more consistent damage on top of that got some scatter changes moving scatter nerf but back the other direction a lot of scatter buffs so i imagine its moving performance is going to be maybe roughly similar with those changes but its stationary performance will be much better so it'll be consistently hitting infantry so we're going to have another ttk race now the greyhound against the Stuart. both these guys got kind of nerfed this patch let's see which one comes out better off no upgrade on the Greyhound, by the way, just for your nodge. Hmm. Stuart's landing short, it looks like, quite a few times there. And they look pretty similar. And they don't look that impressive. <laughs> it's like, you know, best case scenario on the wrong side of heavy cover, mega clumped up. The Greyhound will obviously get the advantage of uh, the 50 cal, which will improve it, but the Stuart, this is about as good as it's going to get. The 250 got a few buffs this patch, which is a little bit confusing to me because it felt like it was in a reasonable spot last patch. But yeah, it got a vet requirement decrease, halved its vet requirements on all levels. Don't really know enough to have an informed uh, decision about that personally. But yeah, cost decrease by 10 manpower, not a huge deal. But the big one is a frontal arm increase by one. And that does make a huge difference when it comes to those early game skirmishes. Six of the of armor, you're going to take way less damage from small arms. And it'll change things like this. Dingo versus 250 matchup I've got set up here. So, uh, yeah. Let's switch the Dingo over to enemy. See how it goes now. Okay, it looks like the Dingo's going to still win at both ranges. It's a bit of a relief. I thought it might be uh, a bit more swingy. Because, yeah, the 250 does offer a lot more utility than the Dingo, in my opinion, being able to put a squad inside it. Okay, that's that's a relief at least. But, yeah, I, I don't think the armor buff was a good idea. I think they should revert that, especially now that Bar's got their penetration nerfed. Yeah, revert the armor change, please. Let's have a look at the changes to the armory. And first off, you'll notice there is no grenade package in here anymore. That's Panzer right, Grenadier, Panzer Grenadiers. You don't need to tech grenades anymore separately. So you either get them from going fire support elements or having your mechanized company down for free. So that's a huge, huge buff to Panzer Grenadier. It's like, I cannot overstate that. Saving that amount of manpower is going to make it so much easier to go for veteran squad leaders or anything else, basically. 
and still diffuse light vehicle pressure. You have something for apply us? pressure to machine guns as well. That is like a massive buff to Africa Corps, not having to pay for grenades through the armory anymore. Advanced Field Repairs has had a 50 manpower cost reduction and it's moved. It used to be up here, now it's down here in the first tier. I think this is a good idea to shift it away because previously it had to compete with emergency repair kits and it would always come up short because you know the extra health and out of repair auto is just too strong you can't get really compete with it so yeah bring it earlier might see some play now could actually be quite good taking its place in the final tier we have a new upgrade called advanced optics so it gives your vehicles plus five vision range at all times but that increases to 10 when the vehicle is stationary so yeah that's pretty strong i do feel like africa core has been lacking a little bit in the vision department mainly because they don't really have infantry options to kind of fill that role and they don't have flares don't really have uh, recon planes or anything like that so they are hurting a bit for vision they've got the recon tractor which has been getting kind of popular in uh, high level 2v2s i've been casting but you yeah, can't really afford it in 1v1s but yeah i, I don't think this is the way I would go about solving that problem. So a quick demonstration of the advanced optics on uh, the Mata here. Here's its default sight range out to 35, coming slightly short of 50, which is its attack range. I'm gonna go for the advanced optics now. So yeah, not quite self-spotting all the way out to 50, but pretty close. You do of course lose that vision when you start to drive. But yeah, it's gonna be hard to sneak up on it. And as you can see here, turning doesn't count as moving in company Ferris 3 for a lot of these things so staying in place and turning you're not going to lose your vision so yeah i could We're see stopping. martyrs with this extra vision upgrade being very difficult to overcome even uh, though maybe in the most recent patch they were slightly under strength after the previous round of nerfs they got Ursilieri and the italian combined arms battle group in general have received quite a few changes this patch first off Ursilieri cheaper now to deploy going down to 280 manpower each. Does make them quite a lot of pe more appealing at that cost. Definitely, you know, they would struggle against riflemen and they cost more, so made them not a terribly appealing option for me personally. So yeah, they've also had a cooldown nerf, but I imagine that probably keeps them like similar deployment time as they were pre-patch, but at the end of deploying all your Bacillary, you're gonna have a lot of extra manpower left over. So yeah, that's that's pretty nice. On top of that, they changed the cost of the Raiders down to uh, only two models, two uh, command points rather, instead of three. But when you tick this, you don't get a free Raider anymore. So that was kind of a big power spike previously, and you don't get that anymore. On top of that, when you uh, upgrade a Raider on your squad, you can't upgrade a second one. Now the Braider performance did get buffed this patch, but personally I don't think it's going to be enough to uh, carry these guys against riflemen. You know, used to be, for me, I would usually go for Panzergrandiers if I was going down this side of the tree. But they can't, as far as I'm aware, go for double LMGs either. And I did double check, I asked the devs if this was intentional not being up to upgrade a second LMG, and they said yes. So that was surprising to me. Listen up, uh, but yeah, for me, I used to, when playing this battle group, I would go Ready. for Hands Green Deers because uh, for the Basiliary to compete against Rifemen, I felt like I needed veteran squad leaders to get the vet gain bonus and to get the minus 10% incoming damage. So at that point, why not go for Panzer Green Deers? Because, you know, you now, especially, you're going to get free anti-tank grenades and the LMG better than the Breda. The Breda, I think, quite bad for its cost, at least uh, pre-patch. Maybe it's okay now. Yes. So, yeah, with only one Breda, even though it's buffed in performance, I don't think I'm personally going to be going for this, especially uh, since, you know, you don't get a snare. Then the Green get free snares. You know, the Basiliary maybe got better in some regards, but the Panzer Green has got much better in other regards. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to be using Basilieri unless yes. they add an option to get a second Braider again. So let's have a look at the DPS changes of the Braider and they increase the burst length, which is basically a DPS increase at all ranges. You can see here, maybe about 15% more DPS up close. Pretty noticeable amount long range as well, maybe about 
it's at twenty percent ish. So yeah, it's a it's a good buff, good amount of DPS extra. But let's add in uh, the uh, rest of their units, you know, the rest of their models late game. And now it's not looking quite so meaningful anymore. Going from previous patch to current patch, blue previous patch. You know, you, you're not going to be noticing that that much. And let's say we add the second braider now. And now previous patch, they were stronger at all ranges. So yeah, these uh, changes, not that uh, good in my book. As well as this, we'll have a look at uh, the performance this patch against double bar riflemen here. You can see the riflemen beat them at pretty much all the like meaningful ranges. You know, in Co3, you typically don't fight long range, slower paced engagements beyond about 25 range. So in the more meaningful ranges, the riflemen uh, beat the current iteration of Basilieri, and they have uh, more health to boot. I suppose the Basilieri do have a bit more utility with their passive sprint and whatever, but you know, if we added a second Braider to the Basilieri, now they are kind of stomping on the Riflemen at all ranges, so maybe that's what they were worried about. But you know, Riflemen can get upgrades in other areas, they can use the Pororonum ability, uh, they can get a health boost, so and they, they, you know, get, get uh, cost reductions, you know, free reinforce from the med tent. They've got a lot of other things going for them and a snare. So the next question is, should you go for the buff braider on your Panzergrenadiers? Well, here we have a comparison. The uh, LMG, the regular one, MG34 over here, and the uh, braider in blue. You can see probably not because the MG has way better long range performance and pretty much identical at point blank. So no, stick with the uh, extra 20 munition cost MG34, it's worth it. The Braider does have better moving performance though, that's one thing going for it, comparing that. So if you're a big fan of run and gun, you want to try out some run and gun pegrins, that's probably the use case. But personally I would uh, still be sticking with the MG34. The combat half-track upgrade was also buffed to give a flat 4 armor bonus in every single direction. Compared to previously, I'll have a uh, before and after-ish. I have a screenshot of what combat half-tracks used to give the 250. Of course, subtract one front armor as well, because I consider they'll probably revert that, in my opinion. But yeah, that's going to make these uh, really strong. You know, especially really good for my 250-9 build. This is going to be even better than it was previously. So yeah, watch out. This combat half-track upgrade is going to be quite... Good now. Another huge change for Africa Corps, you can now build Panzerjäger from the Light Support Company. No longer can only get them from the Corlins, even though the Corlins is still pretty good value, getting a 250 on top for very cheap. But yeah, this is, this is a big deal. Africa Corps kind of needed uh, an extra form of light anti-tank in the early game, and especially if you end up losing your first Panzerjäger, it could be really tough against the airline light vehicles. But yeah, I think uh, 250 manpower is probably too cheap for how good they are. Maybe bump them up to 280-ish. And on top of that, maybe they could have their VET We're 0 listening. concealment moved up to VET 1 instead. Because yeah, it's you know, camouflage like this and uh, anti-camo tools at the moment in Co. 3 are not really that well developed. They probably still need some adjustment. It's just such a nuisance. They are now the same price Order as bazookas, so let's see uh, how they compare in anti-infantry performance. Do get the uh, ambush bonus on the Panzerjägers. Well, I think we can see where this is going. This is an absolute stomping Panzerjägers comfortably winning. This is even without combined arms or anything else. Bazookas, you know, obviously they have more penetration, but I'd say, you know, the tear gas rounds, since you can kind of use it long range, much more useful than the bazooka squad's snare. Like their snare doesn't track, so they have to stay in that tiny activation range. Terrible at the moment. So I think we can see which of these two are better. The bazookas, if you do eventually get in the vet one, the phosphorus rocket, pretty good. And, you know, if you go for the uh, infantry support center, being able to plant mines with them is pretty nice as well. But 
yeah, Panzer Jaeger's probably too good for the cost at the moment. The combined arms bonus has changed. It's now exactly the same on all Africa Core units that are affected by it. 10% accuracy, 15% speed, and 10% harder to hit while it is active, while they're near a vehicle that can trigger it. Used to be the case for Panzer Grenadiers, they got a uh, stronger version of it to give them more bonuses, also extra range on their grenade and anti-tank grenade. It's no longer the case. And basically all of those bonuses have just been moved onto the stock Panzer Grenadiers performance. So by stock, they've got a standard grenade range and anti-tank grenade range, I think it's 20 now and 15, which is standard for both of those. Uh, on top of this, I think focus fire you used to have a shorter activation range when you were affected by combined arms. Now that's like a, a normal type of range. And yeah, all of these combat boosts have essentially been moved into the Panzer wow, Grenadier's standard performance, sure. both in terms of the LMG performance and the regular rifle performance, making them stronger outside of vehicle play, which kind of buffing them up in 1v1s, essentially what the developers were saying during their stream. You know, in team games, pretty easy. You're only fighting in a relatively smaller lane. You're going to have a vehicle nearby. So combined arms, pretty easy to get in team games. But in 1v1, you spread out across a huge area of the map. You might only have combined arms on like one third of the map, essentially. So Panzer Grenadiers were struggling because of that. Went scaling between the different modes. So this is going to make Panzer Grenadiers far better, especially when you combine that with the fact you no longer have to tech grenades. The Italian Infantry Battle Group has gone through a boatload of changes. First off, a lot of the abilities have been shuffled around. The L6s used to be down here, kind of competing with the Guastatori for your early command points. Now you can get them for free after you unlock the Guastatori. So you're not forced to go into one or the other. And if you go for L6s, you know, your Guastatori won't end up coming in super late and being massively outscaled by the enemy's infantry by the time they arrive. So I think, I think I can kind of get on board with what they're trying to do there. On top of that, uh, they've moved uh, quite a few of these abilities around. I think defensive operations and booby traps used to be down here competing against each other. They're now uh, on the other side of the tree. And we've got the registered artillery on the side, which is, uh, you know, after it got buffed in the previous uh, patch with all the artillery overhaul, it's actually pretty good now for one uh, command point. And the Kanoni came down one command point as well. It used to be four, now it's three. On top of that, you used to have to spend at least one command point to get down to it on one of these two. So it essentially arrives like two command points earlier now, which is a little bit strange. Didn't really feel necessary to me. And, you know, I have gone for the Kanoni rush <laughs> quite a few times. So I'm one of the few people who knows what he's talking about in that department. Anyway, having a look down the other side, yeah, we've got the defensive operations here against Sound the Alarm, which uh, did get some buffs. We'll have a look at that later. Then the booby traps, which also got buffed. And then uh, finally, the propaganda war also got some changes this patch. Also from the Italian Infantry Battle Group, the Guastatori got buffed. They have now got more armor, going to 1.5 instead of 1.25, which does actually make quite a big difference. I believe that's the amount of armor they had at launch. And yeah, I don't think that that was entirely necessary. I played with Gostatori quite a bit and they felt fine in their current iteration. And I would say the fact that you don't have to tech grenades anymore for Panzer Grenadiers means that veteran squad leaders would have been quite a lot more affordable. And really, uh, yeah, once you get that on the Gostatori, they felt fine to me, especially combined with the bars, getting a penetration nerf. Now, you know, long range bars are not going to do as much damage to Guastatori anymore. So I could imagine Rifeman struggling a lot with Guastatori, whereas I found it was a pretty even and pretty fair fight. Uh, double bar Rifeman, like a decent matchup against a veteran squad leader upgraded Guastatori. Didn't feel too much of a losing battle. Not uh, reasonable. So it's interesting they added back in the armor. It's going to make Gostatori quite a lot better in uh, small arms firefights. The L6s also got buffed this patch. First off, they got a very minor cost increase. But yeah, nothing that's going to really slow your timings down. In the past, my experience was these were generally more gated by your command points than uh, the actual cost of them. So I don't expect that increase in the cost is really going to change too much in terms of their timing. Still hit the field around 4 minutes 30, uh, depending on how the game goes. 
depending on the command points. They've got more health now, going from 240 health to 280, and that is actually a huge difference because a lot of weapons in this game do 120 damage, like the Chaffee, for instance. So changing the L6 from a two-shot kill to a three-shot kill in those matchups, it's like a night and day difference. That makes these so, so much stronger. L6 now has medium crush, so it can go through, you know, like stone walls and stuff like this. It's going to make it a lot easier to uh, get around with it. It's got a brand new veterancy ability called Emergency Overdrive. This disables its gun, but gets 50% speed, 25% acceleration, and 25% harder to hit for 15 seconds. So it's going to make it very hard to chase this down with just about anything. Even the Chaffee's not going to keep up with that. That is really fast. So going to make it for some very quick escapes. I think previously the ability that this had was absolute garbage because again like a, a rate of fire boost I think it was or like a reload bonus doesn't really make much of a difference for the L6 because it fires 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 and now it's the reload cycle. It's such like a minor percentage of its actual firing time similar to the whirlwind. So you're getting rid of that completely useless for that one. Uh, a welcome change to the L6. L6s have also got a massive penetration bonus. So previously it used to be a big issue like double L6s couldn't even be the Greyhound. Like maybe you'd have a dicey situation if you got onto the rear armor of the Greyhound for basically the entire fight with both of the L6s. They could narrowly win. But now let's see how they do against... Uh, Couple chaffies. This is against the. Uh, oh, I'm shooting cross paths like that. That's weird. Yeah. They missed a bit of firing time. Just trying to shoot miles away from them for some reason. We took time to priority. So it looks like the Chaffee can squeeze out a victory. A two on one like that, but only just. And I can imagine the L6s, if you got some you know, more health buffs on them, maybe you could get them out of range, especially with the uh, second tier. This one uh, is not going to change much. But yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, they, they probably needed a slight pin buff, but that might have overcooked it. I could imagine the Greyhound will really struggle against the L6s. And they're not really like that expensive, if I'm honest. And they're only going to be more affordable, as I said, since you don't have to tech grenades. Just frees up so much manpower for other things for Africa Corps. Designate Defensive Line has been renamed to Sound the Alarm. So cost reduction down to 40 munitions from 60. And also has a sound effect, so let's see what it sounds like. Proximity Alarm. Defend this sector at all costs. Aha, uh -huh, look, it does apply to the 88. See the difference it makes in rate of fire. 50% it says. One out of sector, one in sector. It's firing way faster. So yeah, you know, something to play around with. These sector type abilities are generally stronger in team games where, you know, a sector covers a larger area than 1v1. So more, maybe more of a team game ability. Similar story, maybe the 88 is easier to get in uh, team games. But yeah, I think uh, pretty good. 20% received damage or received accuracy bonus on top of this. Uh, yeah, I think it should see some play for 40 munitions. So now that we have numerical descriptions, I wanted to see what prepared positions does in this commander or battle group. And you can see plus 7 vision range on team weapons and minus 33% incoming damage. So yeah, if you are going for an 88 in the late game, probably better to go down this side, buff the rate of fire with it and reduce the incoming damage it takes. Now we're taking a look at booby traps that also got buffed this patch. First off, a command point cost reduction to unlock them, going down to one only, and getting shuffled around to a different position in the battle group, so maybe you don't have to make a difficult decision anymore. We can on top of that, on they are 10 munitions cheaper now to get, and when they trigger, you see 
a 100% decapture rate penalty or to uh, enemy units that are going to try capture this. So I'm going to run in here with these engineers, enemy squad, see how it goes, see how much slower it is. Doesn't mean it's going to be completely uncapped. Do you hear that noise? Do they change this? See the clock there showing that it's got a delayed capture rate. Yeah, you can see the clock going faster now. Territory lost. Let's let's hear that again. All right, so we're coming in here. We've got the boob trap on the point. Enemy squad rolling up. Yeah, so you hear like a kind of tripwire sound going off. Did they have that on there before? I don't, I don't recall that being present before. Maybe it was drowned out by the explosion noises. And there it leaves this clock on the point, showing it's going slower. On this strategic point, it lasts for about three quarters of the capture time. Enemy forces have taken. Yeah, I thought this also used to leave a pool of flame behind. Did that get removed in the previous nerf to it? Like after the previous nerf basically was completely not worth getting, but I can't recall. I thought it still left like a smaller pool of flame behind, close to the point. Whereas before the nerf, it left a like invisible massive pool of flame behind. Either way, uh, yeah, I still don't think I'll be building the booby traps, but good to see them getting buffed. Now we're looking at propaganda war, which got reworked. So now it's going to be spraying out suppression. And if a unit is pinned, it'll force them to retreat once they're pinned, but not like an instant retreat from Propaganda War. Personally, I never really use this ability because 150 munitions to force a bunch of units to retreat doesn't really feel like that good of a deal to me, at least as a 1v1 player, and especially because players tend to blob less than 1v1, so you know, if you're lucky, you'll get two squads, maybe three, rather than like a massive like six-man blob, six-squad blob, you might get in fours. So let's see how it goes against this big formation of infantry. Oh, I'm still not going to be using it myself. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe I could see it a little bit, actually, thinking like creatively, because now units that are pinned can be run over by tanks. So maybe this is like a tank running over kind of meme. But yeah, the amount of units that are treated from that, a little bit disappointing. Did manage to pin quite a few others, but didn't force them to retreat. Yeah, maybe as a pin into crush maneuver, that could be it. But yeah, that requires a bit of execution. Could be a good meme though. All right, let's give it a go. Propaganda war into crush action. Let's see how it goes. I don't think I mentioned that. That's another change this patch. Units that get crushed. Uh, that are pinned can be crushed. Oh, damn. They're retreating too fast. Maybe this guy over here. Oh my goodness, I'm getting completely foiled every time I get close to crushing their retreat. Here we go. Oh. Here we go. Okay, maybe not such a good meme then. I mean, I could see it like lining up perfectly, but yeah, harder to do than I was expecting because as soon as they... You know, I, I tried to drive over them, then the next shell will hit them, and then they'd be forced to retreat. So, yeah. Tank crush in the game on pinned units only. And uh, propaganda war. Good luck. I wish you I wish you well, memesters, attempting this combo. So another change they made is to the on-hit animations. So you'll see when my pea greens get hit. You know, some of them hit the ground, start crawling around and whatnot. And say if... Previous to this, if you gave them a command to move around, 
They will continue to crawl around on the ground for a couple of seconds and then do that command. Even if you gave them a retreat command. But now, if they get hit by something like that, and you can just instantly start moving away. It just like cancels that on hit animation completely and you can start moving. So it should make your units feel a lot more responsive than trying to dodge away from strikes like this explosive damage largely. They also mentioned they removed pivot times from infantry to improve responsiveness. So this is like how fast you'll turn around if you have to spin your infantry around. So it should be faster now if you have to switch directions with your infantry. I don't know if I can really feel a difference just from doing this. But uh, I did some testing like uh, to measure like input Let's delay or moving back and forth in a situation just like this. We'll so maybe I'll do Let's a quick out, test and compare to my earlier results, see if that's made a measurable difference. I did quite a lot of testing around input delay a couple months ago because uh, yeah, in Company of Heroes 3, the input delay at the moment is worse than Company of Heroes 2. But basically I'll show you the process I was going through and then I'll show you the results. So this is the uh, current video. So I recorded it at 100 frames per second. This is a 100 frame per second uh, Premiere Pro project. And basically what I would do is I had, uh, I have this like input overlay. You see this mouse input. So I'd measure as soon as that disappeared, there would be the start of my input. So this is where my input is uh, been input it so I would this is my timer I'm copying in here and so then I would look and as soon as the squad start to turn around maybe there well that's convenient then I'd stop the timer there whatever this value was in this case 22 frames and 220 milliseconds that's how long it took between my input and the unit on screen actually moving. So that's the testing I did. I did a lot of this uh, a couple of months ago. And here are the results on a completely empty map. This is just one unit running back and forth, back and forth. Company of Heroes 3 before these changes, you can see maybe uh, uh, 21 frames or 210 milliseconds. Whereas Company of Heroes 2, similar test, 6.83. That was over 30... Uh, back and forth. Uh, post this most recent patch, it is basically the same, 22, so probably with invariance or test limitations or whatever. So yeah, it doesn't seem to have made a difference, which probably makes sense because it's probably like the next like two frames after the unit starts to turn or turn faster during that time rather than more immediately starting its turn. I also did this uh, in a 4v4 map with four players on each side, uh, 80 population armies. And that made pretty much no difference to Company of Heroes 3, you can see. 0.3 of a frame, probably within testing error. But for Company of Heroes 2, maybe closer to a frame lost here. So maybe uh, Company of Heroes 3, better performance as you uh, go into the bigger and bigger modes, doesn't lose performance as much. So yeah, I did a lot of this testing because I wanted, obviously, for this to improve. And I was thinking maybe I'll make a video about this at some stage in the future. I decided it's probably too boring. Uh, so yeah, uh, my plan after this point was when Relic do, do address this issue eventually, which you know I have reported to them. That was a large part of the point of this testing to prove that it definitely was an issue. The input delay in Company of Heroes 3 is worse than Company of Heroes 2. And they're aware of it now. And they're probably going to try to do something about it. So yeah, my plan was once they've done something about it, I'd be like, ah, here's one I prepared earlier. You know, I had these earlier testing numbers and then I'd be able to comprehensively show before and after the input delay differences and the improvements they made. So yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, in upcoming patches, they will address some of these input delay issues, make the game feel more responsive and that'll be good. Having a look at the gameplay bug fixes, anti air, we've already covered that. Don't actually understand what this one means at all. We've already looked at breach change, that's nice. Burst weapons will no longer keep firing if the target ducks behind a shot blocker. This is good. 
I was actually thinking about making a video about this issue because I was so angry about it. So I'm happy they've addressed it. Clarified a tooltip, sure. Fulsion Pioneers now have wire cutters at the start of the game. All right. Damage over time, not awarding veterancy and kills to damage originator. Cover that in the Nibbleworth section. That's a big, big change. Really good for dot units. Fixed HMG redeploying when switching targets in arc. Hmm. There are a few bugs around HMGs at the moment. Let's have a look at that. So I believe what they fixed about machine guns, say you're in this situation where you got one model that's inside the arc, one model that's outside the arc. If you try to target this sometimes, it will try to target the model that's outside the arc. It would end up packing up, spinning around, instead of just shooting at the model that's in the arc. So I think that's what they fixed, and it does look to be working correctly. Machine gun will target what's actually uh, it's actually able to shoot at rather than trying to reposition and shoot at uh, the midpoint or you know some some other model. So it's not packing up. That's nice. One issue that I've sometimes noticed with HMGs though is that when the gunner specifically dies, the whole machine gun arc will just rapidly snap, and to centralize the gunner to be firing directly straight ahead at whatever model it's trying to target. So I want to see if that has been fixed. You have orders? So we're shooting off at a pretty wild angle. Reload! Now! And we need to kill five. Go mid burst. Yeah, there. it's still bugged. So this desperately needs to change. There's some really big bugs going on with like the gunner HMG team what do you want? with machine guns at the moment where it's the same story if they, yeah, if they take a grenade or something they just like snap their ready. arcs around and on top of this uh, you know with my video about grenades uh, the gunner can take more than 90 MG damage so ready. I think a lot of these maybe get uh, extra health there vet 3 yep and goes up to 100 Got health, it. but I've had 87 damage, kill a full health, 100 health model, 87. So there's some kind of bug as well. We have machine guns. The gunner specifically, it seems to be, can take more than the amount of damage Weapon that's actually ready. being dealt to them. There's some kind of like crit or bug or issue here. Hopefully Relic can address this. Fixed a bug where the Panzerjäger squad was unable to fire tear gas round if the remaining squad members didn't have and the books are 39 equipped. So I guess if you had gone for the LMG upgrade, you're down to one man, they couldn't fire the tear gas round, but now they can, so that's a nice change. Fixed a bug where it's possible for a unit who was repeatedly given the stop command to completely lose the ability to attack. That's kind of funny, but it looks like they've fixed that now. Nice. These two not too important. Certain call-in units could not be deployed due to incorrect pop cap requirements. That's nice that they've fixed that. Uh, certain units could double shot projectiles. I wasn't actually aware of this. I tried a couple double shots unsuccessfully. So yeah, news to me, but it looks like they've fixed them before I could make a micro tips video about them anyway. Fix an issue where shoe and teller mines would not cancel construction if the builder was given another order before construction began. Same story for fact placements. This is nice because it just reduces the micro burden if you get interrupted on your way there, having to separately cancel it. So I, I like those changes. The Crusader had further sight than intended. That's news to me. I wasn't actually aware of it. The Hellcat and 75mm gun motor carriage first strike veterancy bonus found to work correctly. Not sure what this issue was here either. But as you know from my recent FPVs, you should be using the high explosive on the Hellcat. And probably for the 75mm gun carriage, you should go for what's it called? Like disabling shot or something as well. So uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter too much uh, in my opinion. Already covered the Stostrup and Red Phosphorus doing damage over time again. That's nice. I personally reported that one to Sega. So, you know, thank you to me. The British Forces supply surplus cash and infirmary upgrades could be built on existing supply cash. So I did hear about that. So yeah, you could like double cash points with the uh, Air and C supply surplus ability. Can't do that anymore. Nice fix. M1 anti tank gun continued to fire while brace was active and not firing after it ended. Weird. 
Fixed players appearing on the wrong team after skirmish restart. Well, that's nice for people who are playing skirmishes. Mortars and HMGs should now have their abilities cancelled when they get pinned. That's a good idea. Team weapons no longer change targets when already engaged via an attack move order. This is a big one because previously you could attack move your machine gun forwards and it would run into an enemy unit and say if it got flanked while shooting at that unit and suppressed it, it would actually stop shooting at the suppressed unit, spin around and start shooting at the flanking unit without any extra input required from the player. So, you know, on top of even machine guns being quite fast to pack up and reset up, making it quite difficult to flank them, especially on the wider arc ones. Uh, yeah, it will require no inputs and auto flank. I think maybe part of the reason for that was the target priority system. Maybe once a unit suppressed, its priority as an attack value is quite low. So it sees a new unit and it wants to auto switch across. So yeah, they've adjusted that now, which is good because yeah, machine guns, as we all know, have been overperforming and uh, haven't been changed at all. No stats changed to any of the machine guns in this patch, which is quite surprising to me. And you will now receive a specific message in the left-hand side event queue if one of your units takes a hit from a sniper. Okay, nice little touch there to the event system. They've also made some performance and stability changes. They say they've reduced the frame per second drops while in a match. That's always welcome. And uh, fixed some crashes and whatnot. I have heard on Reddit, though, some uh, complaints but related to performance in this patch where, you know, I think they're on older quad cores and now they're having their performance locked to like 30 frames per second or something like that is what I think I saw. And the old trick you could do where you could go into the settings file, it's like a text file, and then manually change that apparently is, is not working anymore. So hopefully they uh, revert those kind of changes and stop locking people out of performance that their computers can actually handle. They also made a bunch of bug fixes to the single player, both the dynamic Italian campaign and the uh, North African one. I personally haven't played the, uh, the either campaign yet. I'm holding out hope that they're going to add like an extra difficulty level, like extra, extra mega hard. And at that point, I will go for it. But from what I heard, especially for like a higher rank, high skill veteran like myself, these campaigns are far too easy. So yeah, please relic add an extra super hard difficulty level to the single player. So my closing thoughts on the patch, a lot of great changes here, especially like the numerical descriptions on all the abilities. That's really, really good. Bug fixes, pathfinding improvements, excellent. A lot of really good balance stuff in this patch as well, but maybe they've gone a little bit too far. You know, it was probably like 85% nerfs to US forces, 85% buffs to Africa Corps. I think that's going to swing things quite a bit too much in uh, Africa Corps' favor. So that's a bit of a worry. Uh, heavy machine gun teams, not really nerfed. I think it's pretty clear that, you know, machine guns have been uh, too powerful for quite a long time now. And they didn't get any uh, changes this patch. So hopefully the next one. Uh, Matilda, I still think it's frontal armor too strong for how much it costs, the timing it arrives and whatnot. 300 armor is a lot, really hard to get through on the front and pretty good on the sides too, 200. So maybe like 260 on the front. This needs to be a little bit uh, weaker, I feel. Too hard to penetrate. Loiters still targeting units for multiple passes outside the circle. Keep having people on YouTube comments trying to explain to me how loiters work. I know how they work. They're bugged at the moment. Did talk to, I uh, did see some discussion about this. Relic are aware of this. Uh, they, they're going to fix it. I don't know if they said next patch or the patch after that. But yeah, it's going to be fixed. So, you know, you'll still probably take one pass if you're backing out of the circle and the planes line up that way. But you shouldn't be taking like th two or three passes once you've left the circle. So that's good. And of course, maps. You know, we got one new map here. But, you know, the game's been out for about eight months by now. So I would probably expect eight new maps, you know, like one per month. And that would be really nice. But yeah, instead we've got four-ish new maps since the game came out. So yeah, double up that productivity on the map release, please. Because until we get to about like seven maps on each different mode, 1v1 to 4v4, yeah, people really want that variety. They need the new maps. But hey, the new 4v4 map does look really nice. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you consider coming on board as a Patreon backer like all of these legends here.